Uh, the scientists are right. We must act now. The scale of the challenge ahead requires us all to act together. There is no silver bullet and there is no single tier of government organisation that can solve this problem alone. That's why the London Recovery Board's Green New Deal mission brings together London's boroughs and other key stakeholders to work together to reduce emissions. Our net zero pathway shows where the rapid, deep emission reductions must come from. Our buildings must be more energy efficient using fully renewable electricity and clean heat technologies like heat pumps. Public transport and active travel need to be even more accessible and we must transition rapidly to zero emission vehicles. I'll do everything in my power to accelerate all these changes. I'm ensuring my functional bodies lead by example, implementing bold zero carbon building policies in my London plan and expanding the ultra low emission zone. We must transform our existing buildings. We have an energy and cost of living crisis, and yet the government is unwilling to accelerate action on energy efficiency that would help tackle rising fuel poverty, reduce exposure to volatile fossil fuel prices, and deliver emissions reductions. I continue to call on the government to devolve powers and funding for energy efficiency to me and other metro mayors, and to introduce a windfall tax on profiteering energy companies to fund support for people struggling through this crisis. Since 2020, my retrofit programmes have helped secure more than £221 million from the government. My public sector retrofit programme has improved over 500 buildings since 2016, saving 20,000 tonnes of carbon. My innovation partnership is connecting social landlords and UK building firms to develop social housing retrofit solutions at scale, driving up skills and driving down costs. And last November, I announced £30 million to support my Mayor's Energy Efficiency Fund. And in February, I announced £90 million for the development and delivery of a net zero project pipeline. This will initially be financed through the issue, issue of a £500 million green bond which will form the first phase of my financing facility for London. I'll continue to do everything in my power and, and encourage everyone to do the same. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to begin by applauding your statement that we've got to listen to a scientist, so the scientists are right. I wish more senior politicians in the public eye would start from that premise. Now, the science suggests we've got three important dates. We've got 2030, which is the date that you've set to get to net zero by. There's the date 2025 that the IPCC have set, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that says it's now or never. We've got to get to the peak of emissions, and that's the turning point. And then there's a third date, which is a political date, 2024. That's the end of your current term. And the math suggests that if we're going to get to net zero by 2030, by the end of 2024, you've got to pretty much be halfway there. Now, I met campaigners this morning outside City Hall who are campaigning on insulation. Now, they've written an open letter to you with several organisations. Now, I agree with something you'll inevitably say, that the government need to do more on this, and we're total agreement with that. My question to you is, what will you take responsibility for, and what will you do in the next year? So thank you for your question, and thank you for your support on this uh, area. I think the, uh, uh, the constant chivy in, in, in a constructive way of the Green Group has really helped, and the Lib Dem Group as well, uh, actually, in this area. So we're doing a number of things, and I mentioned the Green New Deal mission, because that's a tangible example of now in relation to what we can do. And just to give you an idea of, of what we are doing, I mentioned briefly in my answer some of the leverage in money we're doing in relation to the government uh, who are helping us in relation to this part of the, the work we're doing. Um, but what we're doing with the, with, um, the Green New Deal mission is, for example, working with local councils about can we leverage in money to support them in relation to uh, retrofitting uh, some of their homes uh, uh, that will reduce the bills of their tenants, but also reduce uh, carbon emissions uh, as well. That target, uh, for obvious reasons, because of the, the four-year cycle is 2025, but we'd hope to make significant progress by the, 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 the deadline you've given, which is 2024. But the good news is, if we get the foundations right now, there's an exponential growth once we get these policies in place. So although we may not get the progress in terms of on a pro rata basis over the next eight years, halfway point by 2024, once you start these things moving, it's, it's, like a, it's like a hockey stick curve. It, it really does go up swiftly. And so uh, that's why it's really important to get the foundations right. And that's why the London Recovery Board, having one of its nine missions, the Green New Deal does give us a source of hope and optimism. Yes, and something the campaigners have been arguing for is people to be skilled to do these things. Now, in 2021, I think there was 14,000 was the estimate, and you're wanting to get to 54,000 by 2025, I think it is. Uh, yeah, 2024 to 50, uh, 7 thousand. That's four times current employment. What are your plans to train more people pretty quickly? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful you give me a chance to mention once again what I announced at the top of the item, which is the skills boot camp. So the skills boot camp is one example, uh, which I announced today at 80 million pounds, where we will be skilling up Londoners in future-proof jobs, uh, which is really important. 
The other big announcement we made is in relation to uh, the Mayor's Academies programme. Uh, one of the things I welcome is the government devolving to us the adult education budget, which means we can focus uh, the further education sector on the sectors where we know there is a, a skill shortage, but also where there are future-proof jobs. And uh, as you've alluded to, the green economy is one of those areas. Retrofitting, electric vehicle charging points, solar, uh, wind uh, installation, uh, but also in relation to some of that needs to be done in relation to retrofitting uh, as well. Uh, and we've got to make these jobs uh, enticing. And so we're working with uh, uh, um, people who work in the sector to go into schools and do assemblies. And we're also focusing on primary schools as well. One of the lessons I learned when I went to Gaul uh, recently was they are working in primary schools to make sure people at a young age can see these jobs and can aspire towards them as well. Thank you. Um, moving on to flights now. We've had two reports uh, in the last couple of weeks, one from the charity Possible and one from the Aviation Environment Federation. And they've both said that the government is essentially failing to meet its climate reduction targets on aviation or flying. Now, that's where the uh, airline industry are out of control because they're not meeting their own targets and they're marking their own homework. Now, would you agree with me that to get to net zero by 2050, which is the UK's environmental target, um, that is completely incompatible with any aviation expansion. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I've not read, uh, but I was interested by the headlines that the Secretary of State uh, in the last few days has, has done some work with, I think, Pete Buttigieg in America in relation to Syria. I, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't want to mislead the assembly. So, I, I think there is some work the government's doing in relation to aviation. I'm, I, I'm related, so, let, so to give credit to the government, which is unlike me. Uh, so, so I've not read that full report yet, but I think we are, as a, as a country, looking at what we can do in relation to carbon emissions from uh, aviation, uh, uh, subject to what the government has said there. Of course, we need to make more prog progress in relation to reducing carbon emissions from, from aviation and um, all sectors. You did say earlier this year, I fail to see how any airport expansion could be justified being incompatible with achieving the UK's net zero target. Do you still stand by that? You know, I, th th I think there's two separate, two separate discussions. One is expansion. I'm against expansion. You know my views in relation to uh, Runway 3. There's a separate discussion about how we can reduce carbon emissions from what we have. And, that, and that's the work that the government's doing. Uh, and uh, my understanding is, and again, I've not read the full report, that our Secretary of State went to America and, and uh, has signed an agreement with the US Secretary of State in relation to what we can do, working together in relation to incentivizing the reduction of carbon emissions. But again, I've not read the full report, but I think that that does bode well in relation to not simply focusing on reducing expansion, making progress in relation to those aviation we do have, how they can be encouraged, enticed, incentivized to reduce the emissions that they already have. Brilliant. Well, we have some ideas there. I note that you thank us for chiving you along on various things. I've noticed your drug policy is now being inspired by green policy and also on road user charging. Would you now take up our policy of a frequent flyer levy? Uh, I'm not sure what that policy is, but I'm more than happy for you to speak to me in relation to what that is. Well, essentially, it's looking at 75% of, um, sorry, 15% of people take 70% of the flights. And it's saying essentially the polluter pays. So this isn't going after people's family holidays or someone going on one business trip. This is about the small amount of people who frequently fly and making sure that we're not subsidizing aviation, but actually we're subsidizing trains. Presumably, that would be something you'd be very interested in. Sure, I'm more than happy to speak with the, the member off, offline to discuss these things. And just to reassure Londoners, we actually often do get on on these sorts of stuff and do have conversations. Sometimes they're animated, uh, sometimes they're less so, but I think it's a good example of, of looking for the best ideas. And, and you know, we, we want to be a, uh, an administration that just because the, the, the color of the party you belong to means we don't talk to you, we actually do and we listen as well. So can I take that away and ask colleagues in, in my team to speak to the, the member to see any ideas he's got in this area? I really appreciate your collegiateness on this. Uh, no further questions.